I, I mean, I can't make this stuff up to you because someone may be going through it, but I levitated um, through, you can call it alien slave technology, but fallen angel technology. I literally was levitated on my bed between being asleep and being awake. And I said the name three times. I just said, Yahusha, Yahusha, Yahusha. And I was just settled down. You know, in this world, when you begin to, to renounce the wicked one, I, I don't even, he doesn't even deserve that title. He doesn't even deserve the title of Satan. I call him the nasty one. <laughs> in this life, when you begin to renounce the nasty one and all of his plots, his tricks, his schemes, his, you know, all of what Sheol is plotting against God's children and he comes at you and you renounce Satan and you renounce his ways and you renounce his gateways, you renounce his entries, his portals, and you start giving over you, even the parcels of you that have been fragmented, even the parcels of you, the fractals that have been fragmented and disturbed throughout the, the bloody, bombastic life of a fallen world. And when you begin to reintegrate your soul, your awareness, your mind, your will, your emotions back into your body, and you know, you observe the days that he tells us to, like this kind only comes out by prayer and fasting. And, and then we'll even get into today of, of, of what the, the quantum Christ is, of what the quantum Yahusha is. And, and, you know, when you begin to give your heart over to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and you renounce all of these entries, it puts a target on your back. It puts, it makes life can be, can be quite the challenge at times. And, you know, I talk about, I say his name so much because if you don't have Yahusha, if you don't have the Son of God, if you don't have the only begotten salvation, Yeshua, Mashiach, if you don't have him in your life, can someone please tell me how in the world are you making it? How in the world are you making it through? How are you able to sleep at night? How are you making it through the day by day? I mean, I know we can observe the principles of Christ, you know? You can find the same principles of, of, of these red letters that you can find in the teachings of Buddha and of Krishna. By principle, the, it's the Christ principle. It's one of the same, but not even that is Yahusha. Guys, it was Friday night. I was observing Yom Kippur. And all, all throughout that week, I was getting myself ready. And um, you have to understand, I'm recording to you live from the wilderness. I'm, I'm no one special. I'm no one important. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just a man in whom he has shown his love upon. And that love he's shown me, I know he can show you. He's here right now. for a blessing and a healing for your people to just be you. Just be you, Yahusha, and deliver them. Deliverance that comes out of Zion. He's so intense. His presence. I don't know if you feel that, but I feel it. I, I feel him completely. And he came to me. The King of Kings. I got to worship at his feet. I got to cry. Your sandals I'm not worthy to touch. Thank 
is an emotional one today. Guys, the King of Kings visited me on Yom Kippur. And it was a it was a quantum convergence. It was and, and, and by quantum convergence I want to bring the scriptures so you know I'm not just bringing concepts. It was literally I want you to understand the transfiguration before I explain what Yahusha showed me. I want you to understand the transfiguration. Mark chapter nine. I love Mark's gospel. Mark's gospel goes so hard. It's like the hardest account of Jesus that we get. It's like it's like his red letters cutting and slicing you to a max, a double-edged sword that even when I read it, though it cuts through you, it cuts through me too. <laughs> My sword goes both ways. Something to think about. Mark chapter 9. And Yahushua, he said, truly and most solemnly, I say to you, there are some standing here who will in no way see death before they enter the kingdom of God and its esteem. And then Jesus took Sipha and Johanna and Jacob, and he led them up onto a mountain. And he himself was transfigurated, and before them he became resplendent in divine brightness. Even his garments, his robe, began glistening in absolute whiteness. I'm reading from the Amplified. In absolute whiteness, his garments were glowing. He radiated, and Elijah appeared, and accompanied with him was Moses, and Jesus had conversation with them. Guys, on Mount Hermon, was where the watchers in the book of Enoch, in first Enoch, please read it. It was where the watchers descended onto Mount Hermon. Jesus, you see, they, they descended onto Mount Hermon and they transfigurated between watcher angel and human-like appearance. Why? Because they were able to procreate with the daughters of men. They were able to cause their genetic seed, the serpent seed, Look it up. Do your research, baby. The serpent seed was able to shapeshift. And they shapeshifted from, from falling from grace in that reptile, that reptilian-like form into the appearance of men. That's why they were able to procreate and have daughters with the sons of men, B'nai Ha Elohim. They landed on Mount Hermon and they transfigurated. Yahusha. King of Kings, baby, he goes to Mount Hermon and he transfigurates. And at his, this is, this is quantum. You have to listen. He who has ears to hear, let him hear what the Holy Spirit has to say. There are mosquitoes out here, guys. I'm sorry, I'm doing the matrix out here. Okay, okay, I'm being too, too much me today. <laughs> These watchers transfigurated on Mount Hermon and they changed their shape. Yahusha transfigurates on Mount Hermon. He takes back what they stole. He does the ultimate transfiguration and becomes in his face brighter than 10,000 suns. And he beholds Moses. And it's the same time he's giving the law to Moses that he's meeting Elijah on the mountaintop on Hermon. You understand what I'm saying? This is going on. Moses, where it says in Mark 9, Jesus and Moses and Elijah met. It's because he's appearing, Yahusha is appearing to Moses during his time. And on the throne, he's appearing to Elijah when he's taking off. And then he's transfigurating on Mount Hermon, taking back the dominion that the watchers stole. And he does this in front of his, 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 his three witnesses, his three best friends, Sipha and Jacob. And Johanna, John, you understand what I'm saying is that the timelines between Moses and then the timeline between Elisha and the timeline between Jesus was 
all going on at the same time. And he converged, quantum convergence, on this earth, in this flesh. The Son of God did that as the Son of Man. That's the humility he has. He, you know, the Pharisees say, oh, show us a miracle. And he's saying, you are a wicked and a foul generation. You do not know me. You ask for a miracle. You know, a miracle is just being delivered from the, 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 the it could be the victim hardware, the processor of, of how you see yourself. That's a miracle. <laughs> a mother provide a single mother providing for her kids, for two children, mama bear providing for her cubs to make ends meet and still has dinner and prays with her children. That's a miracle. That is a miracle. But we want all this stuff. What I'm saying in the supernatural Christ, the quantum Christ, he appeared to Moses at the same time he appeared to Elijah, at the same time he's transfigurating, taking back the power that was stolen. Likewise, Yahusha appeared to me. Now, I did not see a toe. I was... I was in... I live, I live in a rusty trailer that was probably made in the 60s, okay? I was in my bathroom. I'm in the middle of nowhere. I'm no one important. I'm just in my bathtub. I'm taking a bath. I was just in, I was being silent. I was just in prayer. My God. <laughs> He took me, I saw him through his eyes, seeing me. 2,000 years into the past, I saw him seeing me, crying out. I was seeing him, and he was seeing me. I saw, forget about the, the pins and the needles and the holes and the slashes on him. I saw the Father, I saw the Father turn his face from him. I saw the Father turn his face from him. I saw him alone. He saw me alone. And we converged. We converged. And all I was, I don't know how time stopped. It could have been an hour. I was uncontrollable tears, shaking, quivering, crying on my knees. His presence was filling me up. That much. I saw the Father turn his face from him. I saw him cry out, My God, why have you forsaken me? I saw him and he saw me 2,000 years into the future, the present moment when the Father turned his face. I saw him see me. That's what I saw. And that is for you too. That's the Father's gift. That's the Father's love is, you know, you have to understand, like, am I making sense to anyone when I'm talking about the quantum convergence 2,000 years into the past and into the present? And how is it quantum, how the reality is? Like, what does it mean for God to turn his face, you know? If I'm looking at that tree right there, the moment I turn my face to that tree, it becomes particle. It's the double slit experiment. When I turn my face from that tree, as far as I'm concerned, it no longer exists. It's waveform. It's potential. The father had his face on his son and he turned his face from him. It was as if 
It was as if his only son never existed. As he saw me, I saw him. You know, Yeshua, that call, people say don't say Shua because it means to cry out. But that's exactly what he's doing on the cross, Yahushua. He's literally crying out. Will anyone hear him? The lamb slain before the foundations of the world. That word for world in the Greek is kosmos, cosmos, universe. The lamb slain before the universe ever was. That means God already knew he had a failed experiment cooking up. In the beginning was the word. And the word was God and the word was with God. He spoke us into existence. It says in the 139th Psalm, it says, And God, Yahuwah, wrote a book of you, me, of all of us, before you ever were, in your mother's womb. In your mother's womb I knitted you. I made you. Did you make yourself? Do you remember when two cells came together and then came light in that very moment? Do you remember that? No. Because you didn't create yourself. What I'm trying to say is is the lamb was slain before the universe was created. A book was written of you before you ever were in your mother's womb. That the one true God, the living God, loves you so much that he loves the unit. It said in John 3.16 that God so loved the world. That word for world is cosmos. It is universe. God so loved the universe that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes on him, adheres to him, cleaves to him, fastens to him, shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. For God, Yahuwah did not send his Son into the world to condemn it, but that through him it might be saved and restored and reconciled. And if you read it to verse 18, they never do this part. But he in him is the light and he is the light of the world. But men would not come to him. They would not come to the light lest their darkness be exposed by the light. You know, it's good to accept in your heart and in the fullness of totality Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You know, I, I'm not against that name necessarily. I'm just where I am with Yahusha. I've seen, you know, when I was baptized, for instance, I was baptized in Taos, New Mexico, the day I was baptized, I mean, you gotta, you have to remember, seven years ago, I was a full-on atheist, guys. Oh, I was, I was hardcore out to get God and prove that he wasn't real. And which is arbitrary because saying he's not real is saying, ah, he may be. <laughs> but I was a hardcore atheist, man, and he turned me around. I've been all things unholy. He can work through me. He can work through anyone. What am I talking about again? Yahusha, Jesus, when I was baptized that night by a reverend in Taos, when I was lifted up from the water, he baptized according to Acts 2.38, I saw a bright golden star in the night sky. And I saw that star ascend to heaven. And I was with a man named Howard. And it's like, my, my silly self said, whoa, was that a UFO? You have to remember, in, in college, I studied sociology and ufology. I studied UFO studies. And 
ancient civilizations and the cultivation of society. That's what I studied at Virginia Tech. So my mindset at the time was, well, <laughs> but you know, it was two months ago, or not two months ago, but before that happened, this was four years ago in 2020. And I even said a prayer like, you know, if, 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 this, if this Jesus is real, if the Christ is real, then I want to be baptized and I want to see him. He showed up. He showed me. So guys, I've seen things done in the name of Yahushua. I've seen things done in the name of Jesus Christ. And what really unequivocally matters is where your heart is. As your heart being with him, as your heart crying out to him, you know. A person, in, a person who is deaf, who cannot hear, who is blind and cannot see, who is mute and cannot speak. You know, what is, what is Yahusha to them? They don't even know what that name is. There's no Yahusha in Braille. Maybe there is. But Christ, the presence of Christ, is the same. No matter if the man is blind and deaf and mute, if he cries out to his creator, he will be saved. Or even if he's Asian. You know, they have the Jewish people in my conflict with, 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 with the Judaism is a simple one. The Jewish people of today don't recognize their fellow Jews. There are Jews in Ethiopia. There are Jews in China. You should look this up. There are Jews in China. There are Jews in Ethiopia. There are Jews all the way out in the Far East of the Philippines. There are Jews out in the Americas. You know, the Cherokee called the Great Spirit Ahia, which literally means I am. And Moses said, Ahaya, Asha, Ahaya. Well, I am who I am, baby. You know? God's people are scattered throughout the cosmos. Throughout, you know, it says in Mark chapter 13, in, in my version of the Bible, in this one, the uh, Amplified Version, it says that he will call his people from, from, from the four winds of the four corners of the earth, from one end of the universe, to the other end of the universe. I recorded that in a video called Tomorrow Never Comes, you know. What do you make of that? <laughs> what do you make of that? I mean, we're, we're so caught in on, on the, you know, the supposedly the Star of David, um, which I don't think it's a two-dimensional object. I don't think it's something that you see on a flag. I think it was the Merkaba. And personally, I think that's what the the high priest, Melchizedek. You remember him? That's Yahushua himself. <laughs> That's him coming in a pre-incarnate form, just like it's the, or what would say the messenger of Yahuwah, the angel of the Lord. You see what I'm saying? Is, you know, when Melchizedek came, he had in the appearance a Merkaba. Like it was literally a, a piece of, of, of cosmic technology that he was able to travel into this dimension and then even see the Tower of Babel. And then, you know, in Babel, they were building a tower to reach to the heavens because they, it was an ascension portal. They wanted to walk up in the heaven like they owned the place. Great wars in heaven. They wanted to transfigurate out of this reality. So Melchizedek came and he had with him the Merkaba, or what, what they call the Star of David. It's not a two-dimensional object that you see on a piece of paper or, you know, in some occultic gathering, because the occult uses those symbols too, you know? They use, they use those symbols and they have God's name literally around the symbols. They'll literally say El Shaddai Elohim. And, 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 and black magicians use it, you know? They call on the holy names of God in their, in, their, in their abominable rituals that they do and the sacrifice of virgins. You want to hear this one today? We could go in. We go in, baby. But what I'm saying, what I'm saying is like, No one's perfect. 
we are in this earth together. Every slime ball, every saint, every sinner, every good man, they've all existed on this pale blue dot in this, this holographic simulation. And no one's perfect. But he forgives. He redeems. And you see, I pray for you who are still watching. I pray for you that you get to see the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, of Yahusha. I pray you get to see that. I pray you get to see God's wrath being inflicted on him. And I pray you get to see his father turning his face from him. And I pray you get to see that. I pray you get to see him becoming your sin so that in him you might become the righteousness of God. I pray you get to get filled up with absolute tears of his holy presence, of his, of him. I wrote a bunch of things down today I thought I'd talk about, but not really. I just wanted to talk and say, you know, we have, we have all of these, these strange, bizarre theories and abstractions of God, of, of if we're good enough. Am I, is this, will this ever be enough? If the only prayer you ever said was, thank you. Thank you. That would be enough. The, to see him on his crucifix. To be with him, quantumly entangled, quantumly converged. As the lamb slain before the foundations of the world. He was slain before, before the earth began. He was slain in the earth. And boy, did I see him 2,000 years into the past, into the present, simultaneously, absolute convergence. I pray you get to see that. I pray that you get to see that because that is the thank you. That is what we give thanks to. That is him literally being slain and becoming our iniquity. So that meditating on him and his purity, that, those tears that come to us, they purify us, they refine us. That's what overcomes the flesh. Ultimately, what overcomes the flesh is, is your love for the Savior, is your love. I mean, you're gonna fall short in this bloody, bombastic meat suit, trying to swindle you, to dupe you, marma dupe you. I don't even know if that's a word, persuade you, swindle you, bombastically bamboozleize you up in this car carcass. Wheresoever the carcass is, the eagle shall be gathered. You know, this flesh, we fall short of the glory, all of us. Even, even that crazy guy named Paul fell short. I don't like Paul. Talk about Paul another day. Paul's gospel and, 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 and the red letters are just, I don't know. What I'm talking about with the flesh is like we don't we sometimes fall short and we don't think we're good enough. And his call to everyone is theosis, not apotheosis. Apotheosis is the ascension of one's own God self or some I am presence whereby you become and ye shall become gods, knowing good and evil. You can eat from that tree all day long, but Adam never ate from the tree of life. He never ate from the goodness of Yahusha and said he, he, maybe it was a fig tree or maybe it was a brew, maybe it was a tea and he drank a tea and it, it, it led him into some sorcery and booted him out of Eden. Either way, Adam chose the flesh for this woman is flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone. He chose his flesh and he fell and the call of Yahusha, the call of the Savior, the call is that we would turn away from our ways, that we would see him for who he is, 
because in order to see him you have to see that blood you have to see his blood the bloody blood his eternal blood on his body shed for you you have to see him for who he is you have to accept him in that even as he accepts you in your sins you know he calls us to theosis not apotheosis but to theosis which means to become one in him to become one in his spirit, in his Ruach, HaKadosh, in his Holy Spirit, I behold, I give you another. He will bring forth to your remembrance whatsoever I have said to you. The Holy Spirit will literally bring you the power of love. You see, when he forgives you and he knows the totality of your sins, the evil sins that we hide from him, and he forgives you for that, and he, you know, when, when Yahushua rips off the mask, what's there? Not the identity of a Christian. Not the identity of, of this is who I think I am, this is that, that is this. No, when he rips that off of you, what's shining? Is your face shining? Is his face shining upon you? Or is there, are you hiding? You're either shining or you're hiding. When he rips your mask off, What's behind there? Those are the things that, that draw him because he wants, he is deliverance. Zion, he is deliverance. He wants to deliver you from the fallen nature. Now I could talk about praying. I can talk about fasting. I can talk about, you know, when you do pray and fast, if you do it for like three days, take those days after day one to just be still. Be still. Lay down. Go deep within to your subconscious. You know, the Bible talks about, hopefully all this makes sense today, but the Bible talks about tithing. And we say, oh, big time money. <laughs> talks about tithing, but, you know, Yahuwah says, I need you to tithe 10%. 10% of your spoils. You're thinking that means your finances. Though it's good to have the tool of finances in your life. I know all too well of what it's like to, to, to be poor. I've, I've grown up in, I grew up in poverty. I grew up in, in the projects. It doesn't look like it because I'm educated. But I've had near-death experiences. I've been held at gunpoint twice in my life. When I was 15, when I was 21, I've been held at gunpoint. I mean, I've been through it, but the flesh, you know, when you're still in those moments in the flesh, it's not about money that you tithe. It's, you know, 10% of your mind, of your conscious mind, 10% is conscious, 90% is subconscious. You have to go, your subconscious is a recording device. It's the cosmic camera that gives you the life review that you exit out the right door when you leave. And it, it records everything. It algamates everything. And rather you know it or not, it's holding on to things and it's festering. So sometimes you have to go within your, you have to tithe that 10% to the 90%. You have to go within your subconscious and you have to uproot with Yahushua, with His Holy Spirit. You have to uproot with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit uproot the old programs, the old processors, the old hardwares, and then you have to replace it with this. A word that cuts sharper than any double-edged sword, a word that, that brings back any doubt, a word that says, you know, when you're saying I'm not good enough, he's saying your thank you is enough. When we divert our attention somewhere else, he's bringing us back into theosis, that the pathway that was always meant to be. But the Catholic Church won't talk about theosis. And the Protestant Church, surely, they will not talk about theosis. They'll talk to you about Paul. Paul, Paul, Paul. Oh, I'm tired of Paul. From Paul, we get the idea of the rapture. From Paul, we get the notion of, of I don't know, of a once saved, always saved. Maybe it's good news. But what I've, I've witnessed is that people just say those words and then they stop. And then they're lukewarm. You know, if you're cold, I can make you hot. If you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out. 
You know, you read Revelation chapter 3. He says, Yahushua says, and, and behold, I have redeemed you and let no man take your crown. Whoa. Let no man, no thing, no anyone, no little devil, let nothing take your crown. So that means your crown could be taken. This is why it's so important to, to observe the days he tells us to observe, to, you know, to pray, to fast, to meditate, to, to want him in our hearts. Though our flesh may pull us one way, Though we have the tools and, and the ability to go into the subconscious with our 10%, our tithe, and rip it out within. He says, if you do this, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. It's crazy. I haven't even inquired you to tithe a dollar. Not even one dollar. But I encourage you to tithe into Yahusha. I encourage you to tithe into the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords because when I get up into heaven, I want to see you there. I know you're watching on the camera, but I want to give you a hug. My brothers, my sisters, I want to give you a hug. And in, that, in those days, we will have the true mind of Christ and we'll know everything about each other. I'll know all of your, all of your sins that you hide and you'll know all of mine. And there'll be no more hiding. There'll be no more playing games. There'll be no more, you know, there'll be no more, no more lies. <laughs> no more oblivion. No more lies. It'll all be truth. And we will see one another as we are. We will, as the word says, we will be like him. For we shall see him as he is. He sees us as we are because he is, he is in the likeness of God yet puts it upon himself. Humility. To make himself even lesser than the angels. How many, how many pastors, how many ministers are telling you that? To cause your heart to be lesser than the angels so that, that the blessing and the grace of him can rest Upon you, Ata Baba Shem, that He will rest upon you. Though you have sin, though you have diversion, though you have distraction, He offers us a way out. He offers us a great escape. As He says in John 17, I, I pray, Father, that, that you don't take them out of the world. But that you would keep them away. From the nasty one. You know, when, when, when Jesus, when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he was praying, blood, he was, he was sweating blood. Do you know what that means? He was, blood was coming down of the stress. He didn't want to go to the cross. And sometimes in life we have to take a moment and say a prayer simple as, take me to the place where I do not want to go and calls me to do the thing that I do not want to do. Though he is the Son of God, though he is the only begotten, though he has all power, all authority, all esteem over the heavens and the earth and, and even the ability to overthrow Babylon when they challenge him to a war in heaven and it will be the great cosmic war as it was at first. You hear cosmic war. People think, oh, it's in heavens. It's in la-la land. No, it's not in la-la land, baby. The cosmic war happened here. It happened in the stars. It happened in the cosmos. And those beings got throttled down to the lowest most parts of the earth and then the watchers came two rebellions their whole thing is that they believe that they can overthrow yahuwah and my word for them is john 3:16 my word for them is 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 yahusha's word where he says preach the gospel to every living creature 
How many humans are so unwilling to hear it? Every living creature all throughout the universe. He says, God so loved the universe that he gave his only begotten son. He gave Yahusha HaMashiach. He gave his son that whoever believes on him and adheres shall not perish. When you believe and hear, adhere unto him, you fasten to him and the light fastens onto you and that drives out darkness. God can deliver anyone. He can save anyone. He can work on whoever he wants. Does that mean redemption draweth nigh to the whole universe? Is, is salvation really that good? That anyone who's willing to hear can be transfigurated and even transmuted? I don't know how to do that. But the king of the, the deliverer, the king of kings, the deliverer of Zion knows how. And so I, I just, I say all of these things because As one day he's going to come on us. He's going to walk up on us. Just like he said, like a thief in the night, he's going to walk up on us. And we're either going to be ready and we're going to watch or be put to shame for the sins of our, for the nakedness, for the shame of our, of our nakedness, for our iniquity of giving over to it. We're either going to purify our hearts in Him and, and, and we're going to become pure even as He is pure. And unto the pure, all things are pure. We're either going to become and made just like Him or we're going to hold on to the bloody, bombastic, egoic image and we're going to start condemning one another when he says, neither do I condemn you. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn it, that through him it might be saved. That goes to all life, all creation. Dare I say, even a fallen angel. There's nothing that he cannot do. And I say a fallen angel because most days I feel like a fallen angel. Most days I feel like my spirit is projecting itself into this, this body and it's animating life and I'm, in a, I'm almost in a hologram and all my friends are scattered throughout the face of the earth and you know, I just, I felt this all my life. I feel like a fallen angel myself. He redeemed me. He showed mercy on me. And in heaven you'll know my sins and I'll know yours. Is there, is there anything that he cannot do? I don't know. But as for the salvation of Satan, I think God has tried. I really do. I think he's I think he has tried to offer the scapegoat an escape. I think he's tried. But he just doesn't want to change. And as the as the word says, the God of this world, the ruler of this world is he's already judged. He's already condemned. When Satan's bothering you, sometimes that's all you have to say is, you know, it'd be real nice if you just opened your heart up to salvation. But because you won't do that, you're already judged, Satan. You're already condemned. Depart from me. I never knew you. Start talking to Satan like that. Start talking to him like that. Remind these fallen ones. Remind the people who do not know the gospel. Remind them of the good news. Of what he's done for you. That you may be a living testimony. To the King of Kings. To the Lord of Lords. To Christ Yahusha.
the Savior, my Savior. I can only pray he'd be your Savior. May the Father of lights himself keep you and calls you to be vigilant and valiant in the valor of the Lord, the Lord of lords and the King of kings, that his face may shine upon you, that whatever iniquity you have, that deep in the core processor of your subconscious would be stripped away, and that a new word would be planted, and that the bird, the fowler of the air, prince of this world, the prince of the paladies of the air, does not take the word that was sown into your heart. I pray that the word of God himself touches you, keeps you, blesses you, loves you with such an unconditional love, a love that has no prerequisite of any condition, that you will know that love so profoundly, so, so profoundly, that you would share that, that you would become a wellspring of light, a wellspring of love, and a wellspring of truth, who knows how to draw a sword when he must, that you put on the full armor of God, that you put on the full armor of light straight from the Father of lights, and that you go out and you give the good news, you give the salvation, you give the gospel to whoever will hear it. Be it, if it even, even if you had to learn and it came out of the mouth of babes. I pray that you get to experience the love and the compassion and the sacred heart, the burning heart that the Savior has for you, that he cries out in opulence to all who will hear him. Whosoever will receive this word, let it be planted in him. Let it become a wellspring of life. And may the love of Yahuwah and the love of Yahusha and the love of the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. The agglomation of all that prayer together be with you in Yahusha's holy name. All glory to the King. Holy Yahusha be with you. I shall leave it there this day. Shalom, shalom.